Hi everyone, today I thought I would do a little tutorial on how I do a crochet zipper pouch. This one will be my sunflower version, but you can basically use any granny square you want and then just convert it that way. The final dimensions of my pouch is length is about 5 inches and the width is about 9 inches, but if you're using different yarn or a different hook size, that size may vary. I'll be using worsted weight level 4 cotton yarn. My go-to is always line brand 24-7 cotton. I really like that yarn. And then also I'm using some paint box as well. I'm using a 4 millimeter crochet hook. You'll also need scissors. I use an all-purpose coil zipper. I cut it to size. I have a 16 inch and then I'll show you how I cut it. You'll also need fabric, pencil, sewing pins, and then depending on how you want to attach the lining part, you can do sewing machine or sewing needle. I'll show how I I do it with a sewing machine. I'm no professional in any means, so I'm just showing how I do it. It works for me. I'm not sure if it's actually the proper way to do it, but yeah. And you'll also need thread, obviously. And then I use an iron, which is totally optional. I just think it makes the process go smoother. But yeah, that's everything you need. Firstly, I start with a magic circle. If the magic circle is hard for you, you can do chain five, slip stitch into the first stitch. And then I'll chain one to lock into place and then do another two chains. And this will be my first double crochet. Then you'll wanna do 15 more double crochets into that circle, crocheting over the tail, so that way you can pull it tight and close the circle at the end. There should be a total of 16 double crochets once you're done. The first double crochet being the chain three you did at the beginning, and then you'll slip stitch into the top of the chain three, aka the first double crochet, and then fasten off for this round. On to round two now. I pull a loop up from my second color in the stitch where I just fastened off, but you can attach into any of the double crochets around, it doesn't really make a difference. And then I chain two and I work my first puff stitch into that same stitch. So for the puff stitch, you'll yarn over, insert hook into that same space, pull up a loop, yarn over, insert hook again, and pull up another loop, yarn over, insert once more, pull up a loop and then there should be seven loops on your hook, yarn over and then pull through all of those loops and then chain one to lock into place. Now you're gonna repeat puff stitch chain one into each double crochet around until you get back to the beginning. Once you've completed your last puff stitch chain one, you're just gonna slip stitch into the first puff stitch from the beginning of the round, and then fasten off. And there should be 16 puff stitches altogether. Now onto round three, you're gonna insert your hook into any of the chain one spaces around, and then pull up a loop for your next color and then chain two. And now you're gonna work your first bobble stitch into that same chain one space. So you're gonna yarn over, insert hook, pull up loop, yarn over, pull through two, and then you're gonna do that three more times and then you'll be left with five loops on your hook. And then you're gonna yarn over, pull through all five of those loops, and then chain two. So now you're gonna do a bobble stitch, chain two, into each of the chain one spaces until the end of the round, and there should be a total of 16 stitches again.
Once you've completed your last bobble stitch, chain two, you're just gonna slip stitch into the top of the first stitch as you did before. And then fasten off. And that's round three. Now go ahead and make three more sunflowers for a total of four. And then once you have your four sunflowers, we can start the background. Each side of the pouch will have two sunflowers. So let's just start with one and then I'll show you how I attach as I go. So on to round four, insert your hook into any of the chain two spaces from the previous round. Pull up a loop for your background color. I think it's worth mentioning that um, obviously there's a lot of ways that you can attach your yarn for your next color. I just like to pull up a loop. If you want to do a slip knot, tie it, whatever works for you. Anyways, at this point, I'm going to chain three, which is my first double crochet. And then I'm going to do two more double crochets into that same space for technically a total of three double crochets. And then into your next space, you'll do three triple crochets for the start of your corner. Chain two or three. I do chain two because I like to keep the spaces small so the fabric doesn't peek through as much, I guess. And then three more triple crochets to finish off that corner. And then in the next space, you're gonna go back to doing three double crochets. Next space will be three half double crochet. And then three double crochet into the next space again. And now we're to our next corner again, which will be back to the triple crochets. So you'll start with three triple crochets and then the chain two and then another three triple crochets to finish the corner off. From this point, you'll be basically repeating the same scheme until the end of the round with the three double crochet, three half double crochet, three double crochet, and then three triple crochet, chain two, three triple crochet. Yeah, up until the end of the round, which will end with three half double crochets. And then once you complete those last three half double crochets, you'll just slip stitch into the top of the first chain three double crochet. and then fasten off and that's your first square complete. And then for the next square, I'll show how I attach as I go while completing round four, as opposed to making all the squares first and then sewing them together at the end. So let's set that square aside for now and then pick up your second sunflower and then we'll be starting the square the exact same as before but stop once you've completed the first part of your first corner. So I'm going to make the first three triple crochets for my first corner. And then I'm gonna chain one and remove my loop off of my hook and then bring my first square. And then I'm going to insert my hook into the bottom left corner of that square, um, pull the loop through from the other square, chain one, and then do your first triple crochet back into the corner of that second square. 
And then I'm gonna remove that loop off my hook again and then insert my hook into the first stitch of the other square. Put that loop back on the hook and then pull it through that stitch. Um, triple crochet back into that corner. And then remove the loop off your hook again, insert it into the next stitch onto square number one. Pull that loop through, and then last triple crochet to finish that corner. Once again, remove that loop off your hook, put it into the next stitch on square number one, pull that loop through, and then you're gonna start your double crochets into the next space. So basically, you're, you're doing the same pattern scheme of square num like how you did square number one but you're just removing the loop off of your hook between each stitch and then attaching it to the corresponding stitch on the other square. So keep attaching the same way until you get to the next corner, which you'll just be completing half the corner again, and then I'll show you what to do from there. I really hope I explained that okay. I know it can be kind of confusing, but hopefully having the visuals will help you understand what I'm trying to say. But of course, you can always attach in a different way. I like doing it this way so that I don't have to do it at the end, but yeah, it's all personal preference. Okay, so now that you've completed the first three triple crochets, you're gonna chain one, remove loop off of hook, insert it into that top corner of the other square, pull that loop through, chain one, and then do the three triple crochets as normal to complete that corner. And then you're just gonna continue round four as normal until you get back to the beginning of the round. Now that you're at the end of that round, you're just gonna slip stitch into the top of the first stitch as you did before, and then fasten off, and then you're done with those squares for now. And then with your other two sunflowers, you're gonna do the exact same thing that you did with these two, and then I'll show you what to do from there. Okay, so now that we have two of the exact same thing, you're not done yet because to me this looks unfinished. So I do another round around each of the squares. So let's grab one of those two connected pieces and then in the top right corner, if you're left-handed, it would be the opposite. Pull up a loop of the same color and then chain two. work a half double crochet into that corner and then I just do a row of half double crochet all the way around. So I'm just going to start with working half double crochets along the top and then I'll show you what I do when you get to like the middle seam of where those two squares meet. But yeah, you're just basically working those half double crochets into each of the stitches from the previous round. Okay, so once you're at like this middle seam part, I'll start with doing a half double crochet into that first corner space, and then I'll do another half double crochet into like the center seam part. And then I'll do one more half double crochet into that other corner, and then I'll do half double crochets into each stitch until the next corner. Once you've completed the half double crochets along the top and you get to that next corner, um, do two half double crochets and then chain one, and then another two half double crochets to complete that corner, and then work half double crochets down that side until you get to the next corner, and then you'll just basically repeat the same thing until you get back to the beginning of the round.
So yeah, in short, basically you're just doing half double crochet all the way around, and then in the corners, you're doing two half double crochet, chain one, another two half double crochet to finish the corner. And then for like those middle seams, there's three half double crochets total, one in the first corner, one into the center seam, and then one into the following. So once you get to the end of that round of the half double crochets, just do those two half double crochets to finish that corner, chain one, and then slip stitch into the top of the first half double crochet of the round. Not quite done yet, I'm going to chain one and then along the top I'm going to do a row of single crochet. As you can see, I am struggling to get my hook into this first stitch here. But yeah, just do single crochet all the way across into each stitch until you get to that corner. I just finished this top part off by doing two single crochets into that corner space and then I fasten off and that will be one side of your pouch. And then basically you'll do the exact same thing for the other one, except I don't fasten off at the end. Now that both sides are done, like I said before, on the second side of the pouch, I don't fasten off. You can if you want, but I like to weave in as little ends as possible. So I just keep that part attached. Because once we add the zipper and the fabric part, I'll just continue crocheting from that part to attach the two sides together. But yeah, weave in your ends and then I'll meet you back to add the lining and the zipper. So now with the fabric, I'm just using this little scrap piece. It kind of was like a good size. So I didn't really have to do too much cutting for this one, but you kind of get the idea of the shape. I then fold the fabric in half and then I put my pouch piece back on to kind of make sure that there's like a seam allowance around about a half an inch. And then at this point, I'm just gonna trace around the pouch about half an inch. And then I'm gonna cut that folded piece out. I then cut the folded piece in half following the seam of the fold. And now you'll have two pieces of fabric. And then the construction process will go similarly as I'm showing right now. For now, you won't need the crochet part for a minute, so I'm just gonna start with ironing out the fabric. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fold over the top edge about half an inch and then iron that flat into place. And then here I kind of messed up, so I'm just adjusting that. And then do the same to the other piece. And then with my zipper, I'm going to place it on top of the fabric as shown. So see where I'm pointing on the zipper? That's where you want to place, like make sure that the edge of the fabric is about approximately underneath the zipper. You don't want the fabric to be past the center of the zipper. So if you were to unzip it, that piece of fabric wouldn't be exceeding the opening of the zipper, if that makes sense. Once you got your zipper placed, you're gonna grab one side of your pouch and then place it on top of the zipper, not going past the teeth of the zipper, just kind of underneath as you can see here. There will be about a half an inch of fabric on either side and then notice where the pouch is aligned with like the slider part of the zipper. So basically you're sandwiching the one side of the zipper in between the pouch part and the fabric. As a little side note, I use the side where the yarn is still attached because this is your front and I want that to be facing the top of the zipper. And then I start pinning those three pieces together as you can see here. This part can be a little tricky. So that's kind of what it looks like when it's all pinned together. And then the back side 
And then basically you're just gonna sew along following those pins. I keep the zipper unzipped when I sew it together. I just think it's easier. So if you did it like me and you kept your yarn still attached, you wanna make sure that that is out of the way so it doesn't get sewn over. I leave about half an inch at the start, as you can see here. And I'll sew along like the middle of the single crochet row. And then as a little side note, my bobbin is in the white because it matches my fabric and the fabric is facing the bottom of the sewing machine. And then I color matched for the green for the spool thread. If you're using a machine, this part is, can be a little tricky because it's kind of going in blind. So you have to make sure that you're pinned up right so that that way the sewing machine will catch all three sides. But you just want to make sure that you don't sew over like the coil part of the zipper. And then like I said before, I leave about half an inch at the top of where the crochet part is. And then I'll leave another half an inch unsewed at the bottom. I do this so at the end when the whole pouch is assembled and all that there's left to do is to pin the end pieces of the zipper into place, it's much easier to maneuver it. That probably doesn't make sense now, but I'll show you what I mean later on. And then this will be how it looks when you've done that. You can kind of see where I have sewn along the seam at the top there. At this point, I'm just gonna zip the zipper up and then we're gonna do the exact same thing to the other side. So I'm gonna place that second piece of fabric underneath the other side of the zipper, as you can see here. Still keeping in mind everything I said before. And then with your second side of the pouch, single crochet row upwards, you'll just place that over the zipper like you did before. At this point, I'll start pinning these pieces into place. I like to make sure that my center seams of the squares match up on both sides. So I start off pinning the center so it doesn't shift. I'll normally unzip the zipper now because it's easier to pin these three sides together when it's unzipped, I find. And then that's what this side will look like once it's pinned together. When sewing this side together, you'll be working from the opposite end that you did before. Again, you're gonna to wanna to leave about half an inch unsewn at the top and then another half an inch unsewn at the bottom. Now both sides of the pouch are sewn to the zipper. So now I'm gonna cut my zipper to size. So I'm gonna start by sewing two lines. I'll sew those lines right where the edge of the fabric is. So about half an inch outwards from the crochet part of the pouch. I'll sew those lines back and forth a few times because I wanna make sure that it's secure because this will be like the new stop of your zipper but make sure not to sew over the fabric. You'll only be sewing over the zipper at this point. And that's about what it will look like. Then I'll just cut right below the second line. I'll then change my sewing machine to the zigzag setting and then I'll sew along that edge just to make sure it's extra secure and I don't want it to be fraying and stuff. But again, I'll go back and forth a few times with that as well. And then this is where we're at now. Now I'm gonna fold it in half so that it's in the proper pouch form. And then I'm gonna grab my pins again and I'm gonna pin those two pieces of fabric together following the edge of my pouch. Make sure you're only pinning the fabric together and not grabbing the crochet part or the zipper at the start and the finish. Now I'm gonna flip both the crochet parts to the other side just so the fabric part's exposed and you're gonna sew along the pins. Make sure you're only sewing the fabric together. You're not catching the crochet part or the zipper because I'll be showing a different step for those. Once 
Once the fabric is sewn together, I then trim around the edges because sometimes the fabric can get kind of crooked and it doesn't really look that nice. And then I do an extra step where trimming it just makes it easier. And I'll show you that in a minute. So like I did with the zipper, I'm going to sew along the edges with the zigzag again. I like to do this just so it reduces fraying. Obviously this step is completely optional, so if you want you can do it, if you don't, you don't have to. So once I've done that, I just flip the pouch pieces back over and then we're gonna start crocheting it together. Starting from the side where that yarn's still attached, I just take out that second single crochet. I'll add it back in, but I'll attach it to the other side when I do it. If you fasten off, you just add your yarn back into this corner. So I'm going to start working that single crochet stitch back into that corner, and then I'm going to grab the inner loop of the last single crochet on the other side of the pouch, and then single crochet those two together. Now I'm going to insert my hook into that chain one, and I'm going to grab the chain one from the other corner on the other pouch side, and then again single crochet those together. And now from here on out, I'm going to single crochet into the inner loops of both of the pouch sides of each stitch all the way around. When you're connecting the two sides together with these single crochets, it should be matching the corresponding stitch on both sides. In other words, if you're a few stitches off, it will start to be kind of crooked and wonky. So you want to make sure that those stitches are the same stitch on each side of the pouch. I hope that makes sense. Keep attaching this way until the corner. So once you're at the corner, you're basically doing the same thing. You're just gonna grab the chain one stitch on both sides and then just single crochet into them. And then you'll just keep attaching as you did before for the rest of the way. And then the corners will just be the same as you just did this corner. Attach your last few stitches at the top here, and then you'll be pretty much done, but there is one last step you have to do for the zipper. So here I like to just flatten the fabric out on the inside so it's sitting nicely. And then fasten off your yarn, weave in that end, and then I'll meet you for the next step. So at this point, you'll notice that the zipper ends are not really secure. So at this point, that's what we're going to do. With the zipper open on the side that the slider is at, I'm going to maneuver it in a way that I like. And then I am going to pin it into place. So I'm just going to fold that fabric in kind of, as you can see here. This is why I left half an inch unsewn at the top and bottom of the pouch so that you can more easily adjust the zipper and pin it into place. This part can be a little bit tricky, but you kind of just have to work with it. But yeah, once you finally get it where you like it, just pin it on either side of the slider as I'm doing like here. 
And then for the other side of the pouch, where the top part of that metal like stop part is, I'll just fold it inwards like this inside of the pouch. And then I'll just pin it into place. And then I'll do the exact same thing to the other side. So I'll just show that again for a little bit more clarity. But yeah, that's what it looks like when it's all pinned. And now I'm just gonna sew those pieces into place. Now I do do this part on a sewing machine, but I don't use the foot pedal. I'll use the hand wheel, so that way I can more so carefully go. And like going over the seam is a little tougher. So yeah, I wouldn't recommend using the foot pedal if you do it this way. But yeah, as you can see, I'm going very slow over this part and sometimes I'll have to kind of adjust it a bit. Like it's not always super smooth, but I feel like if you're a beginner, this part probably would be best to do it by hand. And same thing falls for the other side. I find this side a little bit easier than the side with the slider. So at this point, if there are any remaining gaps, I'll just go in and hand sew it and then you're done. And then for this part, I'll just use an invisible stitch, but sometimes I don't even have to do this. It just depends on how well I sewed it, I guess. So that's the final result. I really hope this tutorial was helpful. If you have any questions, leave them below and I'll do my best to answer. Thank you so much for watching. If you make the pouch and you post it somewhere, feel free to tag me. I would love to see the final result. But yeah, bye.